If you'd like to learn more about budget constraints in economics, then you're in the right place. In this video, I will go over some of the basics regarding budget constraints and how they are modeled in economics. I will focus on consumer theory for this video, where a consumer can choose between any bundle of goods within a specific budget. When we think about budget constraints in consumer theory, there are three main elements of a budget constraint that need to be considered. The first are goods, the second would be prices, and the third would be the budget itself. Let's focus on the goods first. So the goods are basically what the consumer is interested in purchasing to consume. So we could be thinking about peanut butter and jelly, for example. We could be thinking about movie tickets and airplane tickets. I mean, you can come up with any example you'd like, just as long as we have some set amount of goods. And in this case, I will focus on a two good example. So we could have, you know, multiple goods. There could be three goods, four goods, five goods. In this case, let's just simplify everything. Let's focus on an example with two goods, which I'm going to refer to as good one or X1 and good two or X2. And along with those goods, there are prices associated with them. So let's go ahead and call those prices P1 and P2. And if you know the prices, then you can figure out what the expenditure will be for any particular bundle of these goods. And in particular, that expenditure is going to be the sum of the expenditures on each good. So the expenditure on good one, for example, will be the price of good one times the quantity purchased of good one. And you will add the expenditure on good two to that and that'll give you your total expenditure. So the expenditure on good two is the price of good two times the quantity of good two purchased. So this is your expenditure. The last element of a budget constraint is the budget itself. So the budget is how much a consumer is willing to allocate towards the purchase of these goods. For this particular example, let's just go ahead and simplify the budget to simply being some arbitrary level of income or wealth, which I am going to call W. So now that we know the goods, prices, and the budget, we can actually write down the budget constraint. So the budget constraint simply states that the total expenditure on goods must be no greater than your budget. So in the context of this two good example, on the left hand side, we have the expenditure on both goods. And then on the right hand side, we have your income level or your budget. And I mentioned that the expenditure can be no greater than the income level. So we are going to say that expenditure must be less than or equal to your budget. So what I just wrote down here, this inequality, that is your budget constraint. Another term you might hear if you're taking a course in intermediate microeconomics is a budget set. So the budget set is actually related to this budget constraint. And in particular, the budget set is basically the set of all bundles of goods that satisfy the budget constraint. Or in other words, it's the set of all bundles that are affordable to the consumer given the price levels P1 and P2 and the income level W. Now I would like to illustrate how to graph the budget constraint. So how exactly do we go about graphing a constraint or an inequality? Well, the starting point is to graph the case where this constraint holds with equality. So in particular, where the expenditure P1 X1 plus P2 X2 is equal to the income level. And this equation right here is known as the budget line. And you'll see why it's called a budget line here in a second, because what we graph is going to indeed be a line. So let's put good one on the horizontal axis and good to on the vertical axis. This is the usual convention. And now let's go ahead and graph this budget line then. So if we're gonna graph this budget line, let's first focus on the intercepts. So specifically, let's focus on the vertical intercept first. So the vertical intercept occurs when X1 is equal to zero. So if we plug zero in for X1 and we solve for X2, we'll just divide each side by P2 and you will get X2 is equal to W over P2. And let's go ahead and say that's this point right here. So that is W over P2. 
And this is also intuitive because this is the scenario where the consumer does not purchase good two or good one at all. They only purchase good two. And they would just basically, if they're gonna spend all of their income, the amount of good two that they purchase is going to be equal to their income divided by the price of good two. So now let's look at the opposite scenario where the consumer only purchases good one. That will give us our horizontal intercept. So the horizontal intercept occurs when x2 is equal to zero. And if we solve for x1, so again, just plug in x2 equals zero, solve for x1, so divide each side by P1 and you get W over P1. And let's go ahead and say that intercept is just right here. So we're almost done here graphing this. So now we need to actually show that this is indeed just a line. So in order to do that, I'm going to rewrite the budget line, but with X2 as a function of X1. So in order to do that, just subtract P1 times X1 from each side and then divide by P2. And what we get is X2 is equal to W minus P1 X1 divided by P2. And just by looking at this, well, we have W over P2 as our vertical intercept as we already derived. And we have a constant slope here, which is just negative P1 over P2, because this is basically in slope intercept form. So this indeed shows us that this is going to be a straight line. And we know that this is going to have a constant slope because that slope is just negative P1 over P2. And again, we can also calculate that by just taking the derivative um, of good two with respect to good one and you will get negative p1 over p2. So this is the budget line. So now let's move on to the matter of a budget set. So the budget set refers to every bundle of goods that is affordable to the consumer. So we know that every bundle on the budget line is clearly affordable. It's the case where the consumer spends all of their income. So the budget line is part of the budget set. So what about the region above and to the right of the budget line? Is that part of the budget set? Well, it's not because in this particular case, the expenditure on every bundle in this region is strictly greater than the income level. So this is not part of the budget set. So what about the region below and to the left of the budget line? Well, these are basically the set of bundles where the consumer does not spend all of their income or P1 X1 plus P2 X2 is less than W. So these bundles are indeed part of the budget set. So what about the axes, well, those are also part of the budget set, right? And technically zero, zero is also part of the budget set. The origin is part of the budget set. It is the scenario where you don't spend anything. Technically that is affordable. That's within your budget set. You're just choosing not to purchase anything. So the budget set is this triangle here and everything on the inside. So let's go ahead and write that down. That is the budget set. And this illustrates the budget constraint. Basically, the consumer can only afford and must choose a bundle within their budget set. That concludes this introduction on the budget constraint. In the next video, I will focus on a few changes to the budget constraint. In particular, suppose that there is a change in the price of a good, or suppose there is a change in the income level how does that affect our budget constraint? Well, stay tuned for that one. That'll be in the next video.